Hey there. In this video, we're going to take a close look at the form widget and we are going to take a look at some of its features, properties, and configuration. To get started, head over to the widget section and let us bring a form widget into view. We can see that right off the bat, the form widget has a few other widgets within it. And the first is a text widget, which serves as a label or heading for the entire form. Um, over here at the bottom, we have two buttons. The first is the reset button, which actually clears every input within the form. And the next is a submit button that can be configured to call an API or perform a DB query based on the inputs on the form. Heading over to the configuration of the form, we can see that we have quite a few options. We can set the background of the form to be whatever color we want, say red, for example. And we can see that is immediately reflected on the form. We can also go in to set the visibility of the form and we can drill down to write some JavaScript to make this happen conditionally. We can also set the form to have scrollable content. I am going to turn this off. In reality, the form widget is designed to work with other widgets, uh, specifically the input widgets. And to show you how to make them play nicely together, I'm going to drag in an input widget into the form. And I am also going to bring in a text widget that would serve as its label. So let's call this name. And the form can be configured in such a way that it is disabled until all inputs in the form are filled. And we can do that by heading over to the inputs and marking this as required. And we can see immediately that the submit button we have over here is disabled. That is because um, the form is empty. Typing something in the form, say John, for example, would re-enable the submit button and then the form can be submitted. And you can choose to drill in and write in some regex that would perform checks on the user input which will serve as the validation for this input. The submit button can also be configured in such a way that every item in the form is reset whenever the action configured for that form is run successfully. So say we have configured the form to call an API with inputs in the form, we can turn this on to reset every input within the form whenever the API call is successful. And lastly, I'd like to show you how to access data from inputs within a form. To show you how to do this, I am going to drag in a text widget into view. And I'm going to configure this text widget in a way that it reads data from my input widget. But to have that happen, I'm going to access the form widget. And the form widget has a data property that enables us to access every other input within it. I'm going to be accessing data from the input. And we can see that the name entered here is reflected over here on the text widget. And similarly updating it, we can see that the value over here is updated. So that is how you can easily access data from inputs within the form widget. So this has been the form widget and we have seen its configurations, options and features.